So today I'm going to talk about a journey in geospatial time series with Postgres. Uh, I'm impressed by uh, you guys having survived this conference for so long. So this is the final talk. Bear with me. Just 20 minutes and you're done. Uh, a bit about me. I'm a unicyclist. I'm a full stack developer, father of two, and I'm a Norwegian guy. Uh, my name is Nils Lars Gård. It's not that uh, uh, difficult to understand that other people can't pronounce O, but it's, uh, it's a Norwegian weird letter. So, yeah, uh, I'm a full stack developer. Uh, I've been working with uh, mostly backend stuff, uh, multiple databases, uh, Postgres, Cassandra, um, HBase, Elasticsearch and stuff like that. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, the elephant in the room, Postgres, and what I can do with Postgres without these highly specialized databases. So I want to talk a bit about unstructured data, uh, geographical types, and uh, probably the most important thing, time series in Postgres. <clears throat> so geospatial what now? Uh, you guys are probably data scientists or have some background in data, so uh, you know what the time series is, right? And uh, geospatial time series is just oh, it's just a um, time series with a location added to it. So it's not ma magical, but it's a really fancy word to use, geospatial time series. So that's my title. Uh, so uh, you have a time, location, and some metadata uh, added to it. Uh, and my use case in this talk is uh, that I want to create an app with Norwegian data. The Norwegian data, uh, Norwegian governments are kind of generous uh, using my tax money to provide me the data. Uh, so I, I kind of own this data. It's, they're not generous. Uh, it's my data. But uh, they, they provide uh, uh, data about ships in the, in the coastal areas of, uh, of Norway. Uh, if you've used uh, an app called Marine Traffic or Vessel Finder, it's quite similar to this. And so I'm going to use a stream of data from the Norwegian Coastal Administration, and I'm going to use uh, navigational maps from the Norwegian Mapping Authority. <clears throat> and from that, I want to store uh, relevant information about the ships, and uh, I want to store as much as possible of positioning data. <clears throat> so that's the, uh, the theme of the talk today. Uh, the, the architecture is really simple. Uh, you have the uh, coastal services, Kystverke, it's in Norwegian. Uh, and the backend, ingesting this uh, stream and saving stuff to Postgres and presenting it in uh, a nice manner to, to the application. <clears throat> so AIS, Automatic Identification System. This is not my expertise. But uh, I know how to Google, so I find out what it is about anyway. Uh, automatic identification system is a worldwide standard for reporting ship positioning uh, from live ships. And these, these messages are sent over radio, uh, and they have some uh, uh, multiple message types. And all these message types contains different kind of information, but most, mostly they contain positioning and direction and this other stuff as well. Uh, and uh, and the, probably the most important field is the user ID field here. <coughs> uh, so since I'm not too familiar with uh, AES, it's perfect to know that I can use JSONB in Postgres. Uh, so the JSONB type, it's uh, just another type in Postgres. Uh, it's a blob, and I can store whatever I need uh, without having to upfront design the database table uh, as I would uh, with a regular relational table. <coughs> Inserting data is, uh, is straightforward. Uh, you just insert a string, cast it to JSONB, and, that's, and there you go. In this case, I've inserted uh, a ship name uh, called, uh, it's kind of a Norwegian go joke, uh, Sjøtam. Uh, so, uh, Sjø means sea in Norwegian, so sea, I love you. Uh, but uh, yeah, and, uh, and later on I found out that, okay, 
there's actually some information that I didn't store here. It's the IMO number of the ship, and that's a kind of a identification number as well. So later on, I can just add this uh, field to the JSON blob uh, without having to uh, modify a database table. <clears throat> so it gives me the flexibility uh, I, I need without having to update the database when I uh, get to know the domain further. But uh, so, so, so when I query this data, you see that my SQL is getting kind of convoluted because now I have to use this arrow syntax, arrow name, arrow size, dimension, and, uh, and to, to the uh, selection criteria, so you have these hashtags as well. So uh, even if I get to use uh, plain SQL, it's not that plain SQL. So it's kind of raising the, uh, um, the unread unreadability. But I get to do what I want. And I can even add uh, indexes to the nested fields in the JSON structure. Uh, this is cool, but um, uh, when you do this, you have to know that the, the query planner will not know how to optimize uh, queries when you, when you do stuff like this, because the query planner don't know the content of your JSON. Uh, so Postgres uh, will probably be more efficient if you, if you have a, a normal uh, table with uh, lots of columns. <clears throat> so OK, now I've stored my data. And I'm coming to positions. And positioning is quite easy, right? Because I'm right here. It's a GPS location. It's a longitude and a latitude. Uh, and you're there. And the distance between us is between 10 and 40 meters. I don't know. But when we are considering uh, distances on a, a higher scale, we cannot calculate with the Cartesian coordinate system anymore. And my mind is like Cartesian coordinate system. I know how to do that. I can just use Pythagoras and uh, calculate the distance between the red and the green dot. But the truth is that we are living in an ellipsoidal coordinate system. Uh, so uh, to calculate the different uh, distance between the red and the green dot here, I have to consider the curvature of the Earth and that the distance uh, on the upper uh, upper area of the map is different from the distance in the lower area of the map. And this is not uh, what my mind is made for. But luckily, lucky me, there's an extension for that. PostKiss uh, is an open source extension. Uh, it's uh, actually a collection of multiple libraries with permissive license. So anyone that using uh, Postgres can just install this. And, it op and it's optimized for storing, querying, uh, and indexing geospatial data. Um, so this makes my life really much simpler. So going back to the application, uh, I know how to select a ship. And you can see the, the red line is like the, where the ship uh, has uh, been traveling for the past hours. And PostGIS now can help me to, to uh, first of all, extract the ships of this, uh, this uh, view of the app. I can just say, OK, I'm looking at this uh, map corners. Can you s tell me what ships are in, contained by this envelope? Um, I can even ask PostGIS uh, now, uh, how far did this ship travel the last hour, or three hours, or two weeks, and even uh, the distance to closest boats? These kind of things are uh, straightforward with PostGIS. Uh, so to use this, I'm, uh, I'm creating a tra table trail. And it looks quite normal until you get to the type of the last uh, column here. It's a geography type. Uh, geography of, of type point, and a magic number 4326. And this 4326, this is a kind of ellipsoidal coordinate system. And this is uh, just one of them, and there are thousands to choose from. And so I've just picked one, and, I, I'm, and I'm sticking with this. So I'm choosing you as our ID 4326. Uh, this is one of the most used uh, coordinate systems. I know Google Map is um, using a different uh, coordinate system. 
Uh, but this uh, also is the same coordinate system that my mapping provider is, is using. So I'm now in sync with my mapping provider, and that's probably a good thing. Uh, so inserting the stuff here is also uh, plain SQL, but it, you have to uh, specify the, the, the uh, coordinate system you're using and then inserting the points. <coughs> To, to use the functions here, it's also mostly uh, plain SQL, but you have to use these functions, right, uh, uh, provided by PostGIS. So, so the SQL looks kind of funny, but uh, uh, you know what's happening here when you, when you see it. Uh, so this is the SQL I used to, to extract the ships in one envelope. OK, so now I've stored the data. Uh, I've uh, managed positioning, but there's a problem with data. And you all know that. Uh, there's a lot of problems with data, but this is the problem with data. It's just too much of it. These ships don't seem to stop moving. This, they, they produce positioning data all the time. And the stream is a never-ending stream of positions. So my disk is getting full, and, uh, and I'm getting troubles uh, with this sooner or later. <clears throat> so how should I handle this? Well, there is an extension for that as well. Uh, it's called Timescale. And Timescale is uh, an open source extension as well. It has some restrictions uh, in the license for cloud providers, but for me as a regular user, uh, I can use it. Uh, so in my case, I'm just using it. Uh, no restrictions. Um, yeah. uh, and this time scale is promising me that it will be optimized storage and queries on time series. It has some automatic aggregation. That's nice. Uh, and I also can set uh, some automatic cleanup sh and cleanups to do uh, and retention on the, on the data, and it has some nice stati statistical functions. So if I want to create aggregates with uh, these uh, fancy statistical statistical functions, there's a lot of them. So I can just pick and choose from, uh, yeah, uh, and they promise uh, good performance. On their own website, they're uh, claiming that uh, in some cases they are better than Cassandra and Influx. I haven't tested that, so. So uh, back to the trail table. We have this trail table again with a, a user ID and position. And now I have to tell uh, Timescale that I want to create a hyper table of the trail table. And saying that uh, this data is uh, supposed to be kind of chunked into one day intervals. And then uh, uh, Timescale will optimize this for me. And the way uh, Timescale optimizes this is that it takes the regular SQL table and divides this into uh, chunks of one day of data. I don't uh, need to know this, because I'm just going to use regular SQL and not care about these hypertables at all. Hy uh, Timescale will uh, manage everything uh, for me, and I will just use plain SQL. Uh, so this is an uh, uh, aggregate with timescale. I'm telling timescale that uh, this is a continuous aggregate. Uh, I'm, I'm creating a regular materialized view and saying, that, OK, timescale, uh, you should aggregate this uh, continuously uh, when, uh, from my rules. And when I've uh, uh, created this materialized view, I can select from it as it was a regular table. <coughs> I'm telling timescale, OK, uh, between the, all the data that's uh, between five and six days old, uh, you should aggregate it. And you, you should do this uh, every day. If I want to, I can say it uh, every second. But uh, in my case, I think every day is just fine. Uh, and the thing about time series is that the most valuable data is the most recent data. So after seven days, uh, since I have the aggregates, I can just say, OK, drop. Drop all the data after seven days. <coughs> so now I don't have the tr problems anymore with data. I can, use, I can let the users specify the trail length. 
Uh, it's a Norwegian here, but uh, it's uh, kind of readable. It's, you can uh, uh, select one hour, 24 hours, two weeks, or even two months of uh, trail length for the ship. <clears throat> so to sum it up, I get the flexibility with uh, JSONB to store unstructured data. Uh, I can use PostGIS for ge geospatial data, and uh, I use TimeScale for time series. Uh, and uh, the architecture diagram now includes these nice extensions to, to kind of give credit to the, the features they provide. Uh, so my thoughts about this uh, talk is kind of uh, is try to use Postgres only instead of uh, these highly specialized databases for time series or geolocations uh, and so on. And uh, coming from uh, a place where we have both Cassandra, Postgres, and Elasticsearch, uh, the code is kind of messy. We have, uh, you have to select from all the sources, data sources, depending on what kind of uh, data you are looking at, and then try to uh, join the data in the code. But with just one data source, uh, the code is getting a lot simpler. Uh, and you don't have to synchronize data between your data sources anymore. Uh, and, and probably the most, uh, the best feature about this is there's, there's just one query language I have to use. I don't have to use Cassandra language or the Elasticsearch uh, queries. I just use plain SQL. That's really awesome. And you get a lot of simpler architecture as well and a lot of a lower costs. So that was my talk for today. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Niels. Do we have any questions about ships in front of the coast of your hometown? <laughs> no. Everybody is okay. very stunned. <laughs> Thank you so much.